David writes and he says, Preserve me, O God, for in Thee do I put my trust. O my soul, Thou hast said unto the Lord, Thou art my God, my goodness extended not to Thee, but to the saints that are on the earth, that are in the earth, and to the excellent in whom is all my delight. Their sorrows shall be multiplied, that hasten after another God, that, that drink offerings of blood, will I not offer, nor take up their names into my lips. The Lord is the portion of my inheritance and of my cup. Thou maintainest my lot. The lions are fallen unto me in pleasant places. Yea, I have a goodly heritage. I will bless the Lord who hath given me counsel. My reins also instruct me in, right, in, in the night seasons. I have set the Lord always before me because He is at my right hand. I shall not be moved. Therefore my heart is glad and my glory rejoices. My flesh also shall rest in hope. For thou wilt not leave my soul in hell, neither wilt thou suffer the Holy One to see corruption. Thou wilt show me the path of life. In thy presence is fullness of joy. At thy right hand there are pleasures forevermore. This is a, 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 a mention of David, uh, a psalm that falls into a category. Uh, mention, and I'll, I'll, I'll share it in just a few minutes. But out of the 150 Psalms, uh, uh, Psalm 16 uh, and Psalms 56 through 60 are, are, are the mentions of David. Uh, mentions have various meanings, which means this. It means to cover. It means to reveal a great mystery. It means to give a hidden, hidden meaning, a, a, a meaning, a golden passage, a covered whisper prayer, or a silent prayer. The psalm is very prophetic because it points to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, Peter on the day of Acts, uh, in Acts chapter number 2 on the day of Pentecost, stood up and he reflected on this. You'll find that Paul is preaching at Antioch. He reflected on this. And uh, we forget that there are times where God's Spirit moved upon David and David uh, was used as a prophet. He was prophetic. He said things that, that were very prophetic. In fact, we don't even realize it, but many times some of the greatest prophecies about the Messiah and the most is found in the book of Psalms. And so David, he rose to be a prophet and was prophetic without any type of fanfare. He simply loved the Lord and allowed God to use him. And so uh, in, in this psalm, we can see that there is a confidence of faith that David is pouring out. Amen. Do you know that you need to, with your mouth and your words and your life, need to have a confidence of faith that you're pouring out, that your life, your destiny is in the hands of God. And so when we look at Psalms chapter number 16, it's divided up into six different strophes or, or what we would term in our lay language, uh, it's divided up into six different uh, divisions or categories. And so, uh, the one and two, it talks about uh, the well-being of the saint on the earth. And then to jump farther ahead, uh, that last strophe or division is in verse number 11 where he celebrates his spiritual happiness and his eternal happiness in heaven. Amen. So I, I need to tell you that we are definitely in a win-win situation. We win in life and we win in death. Mm -hmm. How much better does it get? And so we need to be proclaiming our confidence in God in life and in death. Amen. That God is going to take care of us. And so uh, the very first thing, and uh, I, I look at John Phillips in his commentary, and, and he talks about this psalm. He talks about it being the preservation of a godly man or a godly woman. Aren't you glad that God preserves us? Mm -hmm. Any of you do any canning, getting ready to snap some green beans and maybe you're getting ready to dice up some fruit or some vegetables and you put them in that pressure cooker in that canner and, and, and this winter when the snow is a below one and it's cold, you pop open that can of whatever it is and you'll find that it has been preserved. God's always in can season. God's always in the business of preserving. He preserves Brother David and keeps the saints. 
And I want to tell you the message that I have for you this morning in, in very short, sweet, and general from Psalm chapter number 16 is that God wants to preserve and keep you. How can I live for God? How can I serve God? Times are changing. Uh, things around me are changing. I'm changing. Amen. One thing that will never change is God. Amen. You may look and you may view God differently at your stages of life. I'm not saying you change Him or you're straight away from the gospel or you wander away from the truth. I'm saying that God allows you to experience Him differently, amen, as you age. David said, I was young, but now I'm old. But I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his children or his seed out begging for bread. David said this, the seasons of life come and go. Culture changes, people change, uh, those things around me change. But God never changes. He preserves me and keeps me. Amen. Amen. Aren't you glad that the same God that you felt in your youth, Amen. Brother Dennis, you were telling me about you and you see an old time Pentecost and you like that around here or the old time uh, the religion and you said the only thing you haven't seen is people march around the church. Well, it's okay, folks, if we march around the church this morning because one thing that doesn't change is the power of God. Yep. Amen. He stays the same. And so uh, David, he says here, uh, increasingly the desire of the saints uh, of the Lord to be godly is going to require some effort and is going to require some time and work on our part. Mm -hmm. If we want to be preserved, if we want to be preserved, it's going to cause us to walk out. The presence of God moving this morning don't think that we're going to be able to stand and do nothing and be non-responsive and our situations change. It's going to cause us to work. There are times when we go to God in prayer in mornings like this where the presence of God is. It's easy to be God in petitions. Brother David, but when no one else is around and the emotions of our soul isn't high, amen, sometimes it's difficult to judge. We have to work. Amen. So if we're going to be preserved, amen, it means that we're going to have to walk in the Spirit. We're going to have to fill with the Word of God. We're going to have to know how to pray. We're going to have to know how to live a consistent life. We're going to have to know how to disciple and help others. Amen. But the practice of a godly man, I like what David says. He says this. He prays this prayer. He says, Preserve me, O God. For in Thee do I put my trust. All oh, my soul, Thou hast said unto the Lord, Thou art my Lord. Amen. My goodness is said not to Thee, uh, but to the saints that are on the earth, and to the, uh, the, the excellent, in whom is all my delight. Their sorrow shall be multiplied, the ace and after another God. Their drink offerings of blood will I not offer, uh, nor take up their names into my lips. David's first cry is this, Preserve me, God! How am I going to make it through this? How am I going to weather this storm? How am I going to endure this? How am I going to be affected by this change? Uh, David said this. He said, I want you to preserve me, O oh God. David was crying this prayer out to God in one of the most sincere uh, places of his life. We don't know all the details, but it would seem, and most commentators agree, that he felt like he was in the shadow of death. He was in the valley of death. And he's crying out, God, preserve me! I feel like I'm about to die. God, I need you to preserve me. I need you to help me. That word preserve, amen, it doesn't necessarily mean everything that we may look and think, but it means this. He said, put a hedge about me. God, put a hedge about me. Amen. Jesus, be a hedge about me every day. Amen. Be that fix. Be that hedge. Amen. Be it about me every day. Remember, that's what God did for Job. He put a hedge about him. Amen. And that nothing that the enemy did could come past a certain point. I know I've said this before, but I, I, I love, I love when I'm walking down the road and I hear a dog barking. I love to look down and see that it's on a chain. <laughs> I really hate when they come barking after you and they're running free. <laughs> oh, they're afraid they don't. I don't know that. I don't know that. The thing that helps me feel better is that chain. 
And that's exactly what God has done to the enemy. He puts him on a chain that he can only go this far. He puts a hedge round about us. Amen. That the attack of the enemy is only what God allows it to be. Listen this morning. I want to tell you, you may say, God, how much more can I take? I don't want to blow anybody's philosophy. I've read the Word of God. I've never seen in there where God says, He'll only give you what you can bear. Because your difference of bearer and His difference of bearer could be quite different. What He has promised is that there will be nothing that we'll go through that He won't go through with us. And there will be nothing that we'll face that He did not allow for us to face. And you may say, Brother Seville, how can God allow this in my life? Do you not trust God that He is sovereign enough and wise enough and loves your soul so much that He would only allow in your life what He felt was best for you? Now, I know other people can make choices and their choices can affect us. We have to trust God with our choices. Mm -hmm. Amen. Whatever they choose is on them. Amen. But their choices, God will help us bear. Amen. But He puts a hedge round about us. Amen. And the enemy cannot step over what God allows in our life. So I want to tell you something this morning. Your health is hedged in. Mm -hmm. I want you to know that your family is hedged in. Your marriage is hedged in. Your job is hedged in. Your needs are med hedged in. Your future is hedged in. And even your salvation, it is hedged in this morning. The enemy can't do anything but what God allows. Mm -hmm. And I believe God is going to take care of you. When you live in the presence of God, there are preservations that come sometimes unnoticed. But God is preserving us. Preserve us, O oh God. Amen. That prayer is based upon faith. God, preserve me. If you jump down to the end of the chapter, David said, you'll not leave my soul in hell. He said, by faith, I know you're not going to leave me in hell, but you have a better place for me because you have a hedge around about me. I'm jumping through my notes this morning. But I need to tell you that God wants you to walk in the way of wisdom. God wants you to walk in the way of wisdom. The Word of God says, If any man act lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, and gives to all men liberally. We must know that God gives us wisdom. God, I want wisdom. I want you to preserve me. And what are the things that I need to do to keep myself in your presence? The Word of God, holy life, faithful prayer, reading the Word that faith is built, amen, is put in a hedge about our life. David said, I, I can't participate in the things that the world do. They have their gods, they have their offerings to them, amen, but God, the lines are drawn. Worldliness can't enter into my life because I want to be preserved by your presence. Let's stop for a moment and I'm hurry. We want God's hedge about us, but so often we don't want the boundaries of His holiness around us. Mm -hmm. Amen. Our hearts go skipping and chasing after all kinds of things. Yep. Amen. If we're not careful, it can be the gods of this world things that take precedence, things that take the place of God. You see, a golden calf has to be ground up into powder. It has to be annihilated and gotten rid of. Amen. We have to know that we have to love our brethren. Amen. We have to have a good relationship with them. Amen. It is our mandate that we have to evangelize the world. Those are the things, if we want to be preserved, that we must do. David talked about his portion. He said, he said, you're my inheritance and you're my cup. I'm going to stop on this. That word cup, I know that we think about this, God, you're going to fulfill my life and God, you're going to overflow in a cup. And we've all heard the story where God is so good to us that our cup is overflowing and our saucer is running off of that. But let me tell you that the orange is thinking about 
God being our inheritance and our cup. Can I tell you what that cup is? I love this word right here. That cup is our destiny. Let me read it this way. The Lord is the portion of my inheritance and of my destiny. Near future, far future. When we ask God to preserve us, we have to have confidence that He is our destiny. Amen. You know where you are right now? If you've been living in the light of eternity and you're living for you're living in destiny. Wow. I love it. Do you ever hear about going away to some of those Caribbean islands? I've never been. But they tell me you can take a, a, a cruise and it's wonderful, and they will take you to the most elite of places on these islands. But you go outside the fence, you go outside the hedge of that, and you'll see how folks live in poverty. I believe that when we go outside of the hedge of God's perseverance and living the way God wants us to live, we're living in poverty. Amen. You may be living in the biggest mansion. You may be driving around the most expensive of cars. You may be wearing the latest and the greatest of fashions, but you are still living in poverty because your soul is in poverty. Yep. Amen. But when you say, God, amen, would you preserve me and would you keep me? Would you put a hedge of protection around about me? Amen. God says, I'm going to take you to a destiny. Amen. It may not be where you think you want to be or where where, where, where where you think you deserve. But when you're in the middle of God's will, amen, destiny can be sitting in a cardboard box enjoying the presence of God. Amen. Not that I think that's going to happen to you. Amen. But if that's really what God's destiny is for your life, it's greater than any mansion you can live in. Yeah. God, you are my inheritance and you are my destiny. I believe that we can walk life with purpose. Amen. amen. I believe that we can be preserved in life. Amen. I believe that we can hold our head high no matter what our bank account is. Amen. No matter what our health report mm -hmm. is. Amen. No matter what the stats of our life is. As long as we're in God's will. Amen. We are preserved and kept in His destiny. Yep. And there's no place I'd rather be than in the destiny of God. But I believe this. That our soul can be kept for eternity. David said, you'll not suffer my soul. You'll not suffer my soul to go to hell. But I have confidence that you use me in destiny as an eternal destiny. We have to keep that in mind, folks. This life is fleeting. The next breath is not promised. And as real as life is, Though you can't see it right now, is the realness of eternity that will last forever. We live in a world that's constantly changing. Why don't you do it sometime? What was a popular thing 20 years ago? It's not today. What was the music back then? What the cars were like? What was the latest and greatest in your life? Co-worker of mine, her and her husband are selling their house. And she told me, she said, you wouldn't believe this, but if you want your house to sell, there's certain colors of paint that you can't have in your house. But just 10 years ago, those were the top popular colors. It affects the sale of your house. Mm -hmm. You know why? Because things are changing. But in eternity, nothing changes. What has been cast and decided in this life is what stands in eternity. Mm -hmm. So I want to tell you, the best way to live your life is asking God to preserve you and asking God to be your inheritance in your destiny. Because He has the best destiny for you to know. Would you stand this morning?